working on a uh, square wave oscillator and not a simple one with a low output voltage but a square wave oscillator that has to have an output voltage in the order of 20 volts AC uh, it all refers to my earlier video where I have used a square wave oscillator uh, to make a visible what is the uh, ideal frequency of a, a reversed transformer for AC to 130 volt at 50 Hz or 60 Hz or 110 volt, 50 Hz or 60 Hz or whatever. In that video I want to give the link in the description. Uh, I have referred to a circuit from my book and this was that circuit and uh, of course now uh, it's only a sketch but of course I want to do more and this was made for 12 volts but I want to make it for 40 volts or perhaps 50 volts so that we have here at the output a, a good say voltage to drive whatever uh, the transistors are not mentioned in in the earlier schematic they were BC547B I want to use now in this new circuit the BD139 I'm thinking about using a Darlington instead of one BD139 and the good thing of the BD139 is that it can handle 80 volts maximum and also a very high voltage on its base anyway uh, this is say the first setup, but uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about. In this uh, video, I want to talk about making connectors. And uh, in my, say, big store, I have two. Uh, to uh, base with connectors and here are a few of them these are salvaged out of computer boards good thing is that they have a gold layer and of course we know gold is the ideal uh, material for a low contact resistance and that is say that's why I've uh, uh, taken them apart, salvaged them, etc. etc. So, the, the gold layer, but uh, you can surely see it's now approximately 10 years old that the gold layer was so thin in the micro, uh, micro, micro range that uh, it was oxidated by the air uh, and say. The air that we live in. So, um, and of course, the the say the layer to which, uh, sorry, the the piece of brass or whatever material to which this gold layer was damped off. I don't know exactly the properties, but the idea of this video is again uh, make the. Uh, contact resistance as low as possible. Here are some other ones, also gold here. And I have, say, in the past, salvage much, um, say, contacts out of old uh, 230 volts blocks, etc., etc. And you can surely see that I also uh, have here some pieces of copper. And this is for instance a, a contact block, not a block, but anyway, contact plate that I made today. Anyway, uh, what is this all about? This is the key information. 
I want to connect here this part of the circuit. This is isolated by the way and this is um, a very thin a tin plate. Uh, it must be steel of course otherwise you cannot solder to it. So no aluminum, don't use aluminum here. And the idea is to make this contact. I hope I can make it visible here. It goes through the plate and the plate is triplex, well varnished triplex to the other side. And at the front, say the, the front, this is the back side where the electronic components are and this goes to the front. And this is the front and here I will uh, have my uh, square wave out. As long as the frequency is not too high, say maximum uh, 20 kilohertz or so, or 50 kilohertz, you can use this very, very simple setup. And of course, uh, most important thing, don't use here a ring. Make that the, uh, the bolt or the screw, anyway, this thing, this thing uh, gets its maximum contact to that copper um, contactor on the back side. So don't use a ring because such a ring can give uh, resistance, contact resistance. So keep it as bare as possible and on the front exactly the same here. You can use here of course say a ring to fasten it, this kind of ring to fasten it better. But for instance don't use such a ring. Uh, this is a steel ring but there is a say a bronze layer or an other layer that was say electrochemical um, made and you are never never sure that this material here uh, this is a kind of a protective oxidation layer but this material can give a high contact resistance. So you need, when you want to say mount here a ring, you need a, a ring that has the best properties. And of course you can say well this is a kind of stupid because this is the electrode here. And this electrode comes out out of the back side. Here is that proper uh, electrical connection. Um, well, uh, and you you use your crocodile clips here. Uh, let me show it. This is the way. This is the way that I make my contacts on frequencies to approximately say uh, 10 megahertz, even uh, nine. Sorry, even 15 megahertz. So this, of course, we have here a lot of stray impedance, stray capacitance. But in many cases, that is no problem. Look at my videos that I published on YouTube. Anyway, uh, the, the idea was uh, uh, such a ring, that blue ring. Here, this one, that blue ring with its uh, say prepared, perhaps oxidated surface it can do no harm because this is the connecting uh, electrode. Well, in that case, you are right. Anyway, uh, after all, the best advice is use such a ring here this ring and then of course you can connect when it's necessary this copper part, copper electrode here when it's necessary 
necessary when you need it, etc., etc. It's only a demo here uh, in which I want to tell, say, a kind of best practice. But this is the ring that I'm going to use, and I'm going to screw this on top here. And then I have a good fastened electrode to which you can connect a crocodile clip and out of which you can take the signal out. Uh, I know that this is quite primitive, but anyway it's good practice. So, make it in this way, don't use rings, don't use say other kinds of rings, there are special rings with um, that fasten it much better, etc, etc. Don't use them and only use good quality materials. Thanks for watching. I will keep you informed. This is only a vlog and I'm working on a square wave oscillator between say 300 Hertz and say approximately 15 kilohertz. Uh, that will be made in the most elementary way and also very sturdy and it will work on approximately say 40 or 50 volts. That's not sure but anyway that's the aim and I'm more or less sure that I get can get this working. Thanks for watching.